Broadcasting from Singapore and broadcasting all around the world. You're listening to the Ignite EdTech Podcast with Craig Kemp, created by an educator for educators and streaming to the world. Now, over to your host, Craig Kemp. Hello and welcome to episode 115 of the Ignite EdTech Podcast. I'm your host, Craig Kemp, and I'm honored to have you join us. As you know, I continue to work with the incredibly talented Mark Quinn to improve the final audio quality of this podcast. He has his own podcast production studio that provides editing and mastering services to content creators. To connect with Mark, please see the details in the podcast notes below. Today is the last episode of 2022, and I want to thank you so much for everything you've done to support me and this podcast and continue to encourage me to keep this going. Last week, I asked you about your plans for rest and rejuvenation if you're lucky enough to be having a break over the upcoming period. Thank you for sharing. This week, I want to ask you about your plans for 2023. What are you going to do to make this the best year you can be as an educator? I'd love to hear from you. Please share with us via our Ignite EdTech social streams. A tool that has positively impacted the authentic and purposeful use of technology into classrooms and meeting rooms that I have worked in is Osmo. Osmo is an award-winning game system for the iPad. Using a mirror on the iPad's front-facing camera, the apps can see what is in front of the iPad. For each game, there are objects that interact with the iPad, whether it be tiles to spell words, drawings, or doing simple maths equations. Osmo merges tactile exploration with innovative technology, actively engaging children in the learning process. While it isn't exactly cheap, Osmo's augmented reality technology provides an impressive blend of cool physical and digital activities that can provide kids ages 3 through 12 with focused and effective skill-based practice in a variety of areas, while captivating and delighting them at the same time. I love Osmo, and so do my kids at home, and teachers I've seen use this in their classroom. There's a diverse range of games and ways to use it, and I'd love to see it integrated into more classrooms. It's especially good, in my opinion, for kids aged between 4 and 8. I highly recommend that you take a look at the link in the description below, playosmo.com. Last week, I shared some of the future plans for this podcast and what's going to happen in 2023. If you're interested in learning more, go back and listen to last week's episode. This week, I wanted to give you an overview of 2022 for both EdTech and the podcast and look forward to 2023. Let's start by giving an overview of the podcast in 2022. It was an incredible year with 35 episodes dropped. I had the pleasure of chatting with incredible leaders of learning and thought leaders from all over the world. And this is one of my biggest takeaways from the year, the ability to learn from so many incredible people. In 2022, the Ignite EdTech podcast had over 15,000 downloads, with the most popular episode being episode 98 with Steve Sostak. 30% of downloads in 2022 came from North America, 22% from Australia and New Zealand, and 23% from Asia, and the rest, a scattering of listens from all over the world. We have subscribers and listeners from more than 90 different countries or territories. 60% of you listen to this podcast via the Apple Podcasts app in 2022, followed by Spotify and Google Podcasts. 88% of you listen to these on your mobile phone, and 70% of you are iPhone users. I love data, and I love how that helps inform the next stages of development, both for this podcast and as a teacher in a classroom. I can't thank you enough for the engagement and the reflections you send me every week. I hope to see you back when we relaunch in February 2023 after a well-deserved break. Let's look more broadly now about my learnings in 2022 in the edtech space. 2022 was an interesting one, as many of us escaped out the back of a crazy few years of COVID, closing doors, and stopping access to learning and engagement. While technology added a lot of value over this time, it also caused a lot of unnecessary stress and unnecessary workload. More tech does not equal value add. 
The biggest takeaway for me is that schools need more time for their own learning, growth, and development, and less tech to overcrowd them. They need solutions that are targeted, meaningful, and impactful so they can focus on the emphasis of growth. In general terms, 2022 saw a huge increase in tech in our schools, with a real interest in going back to basics. Although we took a step back in our advancements and innovations with technology, the areas of interest peeking through were AR and VR integrations, conversations that were starting to appear about the metaverse, an interest in blockchain, NFTs, and data, but mostly getting back to normal and getting kids back in our classrooms. Tools that help us connect and engage with the winners in my books, and we must look forward to 2023 for tools that can help us add value and reduce our tech stack, while allowing opportunities for learning, creativity, and growth. Now looking ahead to 2023, I believe we're going to see a continued rise in engagement in hybrid learning. We all know the positives and negatives of virtual learning and being online. Now it's time to take the best of that to save time and money and combine that with the best of the best in person and in-house learning too. We'll continue to see a rise in the use and integration of AR, VR and XR. Metaverse conversations will continue to happen. I think that social media will start to change and adapt and in turn help us in the way we engage both personally and professionally. Schools will continue to look at how to reduce tech stacks, particularly with student-facing technologies, and will look towards hybrid solutions for adult learning, engagement, and data gathering too. We'll look for more all-encompassing solutions in order to save money. I'm really excited about the possibilities of where we're going with all of these things. It's been an incredible 2022, getting back into some pre-COVID ways of thinking, and I know that 2023 will bring us forward as we take the best of being online and the best of pre-COVID norms in order to thrive and develop and truly change education for the better. To learn more, please connect and follow on your social channel of choice and don't hesitate to reach out with your thoughts and ideas. Every week, I bring you a short interview with some of my edu heroes, an engaging learning experience with someone who makes a difference in education every day, with a particular focus or angle towards educational technology. This week, I had the pleasure of chatting with Jason Lane. Let's have a listen to the chat. Today, I have the honor of speaking with Jason Lane. Jason is the Director of E-Learning at Villanova College in Queensland, Australia. He's an MIE expert, Minecraft EDU global mentor, and an Adobe education leader, and is passionate about esports. Jason, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show today. Are you ready to talk about education and technology integration? Absolutely, and thank you for having me here today. This is great. A real honor as well. No, an absolute pleasure, mate. Let's go. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your current role and what inspires you to do what you do? Sure. So I'm the Director of eLearning at Villanova College, and we are a boys' school in uh, inner city Brisbane, if you know Brisbane. A key part in my role is integrating technology across all years of our teaching and learning program. I suppose a fun part of that is myself getting the chance to explore, follow and test trends in education technology. So I do like uh, looking at what's out there uh, and looking at how other schools are implementing and um, I suppose uh, grappling with uh, different trends in technology and how they're finding their place in their schools. So um, I do enjoy working in that space as well. In addition, I look at ways that we can improve efficiency and collaboration in schools. Schools are very busy places and they, of course, continue to become busier over time. And there's great ways that I think we can leverage technology to build better practices and better ways of working over time. Uh, Finally, I also support students. And so if we're bringing in technology into our school spaces, we need to know that the students have the tools to be successful using those uh, programs and platforms as well. So that's a key part too, just making sure that our students are supported so that they have the capacity to engage in teaching and learning using education technology too. Yeah, really cool. And and a nice 
reflective piece on what it means to be transformational in a school, I think. And you're sort of ticking all the right boxes there, Jason. I'm curious to dive into a little bit more about your work. You know, what does an average day in your shoes look like and how do you support teachers in their journey? Well, first and foremost, I am a classroom teacher. So I start and I finish my day in a classroom with students. And I think that's uh, really integral uh, in this role. I think you need to uh, yeah, you need to walk the walk with your teachers. You can't just um, talk about great tools and and uh, promote what's out there. I think you need to be in the classroom with teachers experiencing what they experience. And so that's a large part of how I support teachers by acknowledging and celebrating that I am a teacher first. And, and so I support the teachers in our school. We've got quite a large um, group of teachers across our three sub-schools and I meet them where they are. I recognise that everyone is in a different um, stage of their education technology journey. We've got teachers who are you know, new to the career that even come from other um, workplaces and industries and they bring a wealth of knowledge outside of education and I, I think their input's fantastic as well and we've got to acknowledge and work with them as they come into a, a, a different um, workspace. So I, I try to build their capacity and confidence by knowing where they are and knowing what their, ne- uh, their immediate needs are. I think you need to be very accessible in the in any director of e-learning role. You need to be on the ground and you need to be a really good listener. I think that If you don't know where your teachers are at, then how can you really support them and challenge their growth? Absolutely. I think you're you're definitely on the right track there in terms of the work that you're doing and challenging, pushing, engaging. As a director of e-learning, what's your best advice for others listening today who are looking to authentically integrate technologies into their schools or classrooms? Well, uh, two pieces of of advice really. The first one is to put the pedagogy first and the tool second. I think we, you know, we're we're called as educators to educate and there's a lot of tools, not just technology based, but there's lots of other ways that we can enhance or um, bolt on to teaching uh, ways that we might think are better. But if we don't put the, the student and their learning and their needs first, then I think we're really missing the point of what we're trying to achieve uh, in the classroom. Sometimes I think that there's um, some great tools and technologies that are other, that are available, but at the same time, you know, you've got to ask yourself, does that tool distract or does it even hijack the learning and take it away from what the the initial goals are. So I think that's my first piece of advice. And the second one is to always tinker. I think that the beauty and what drives me so much to be a part of education technology over time is the fact that there is such a changing landscape. And and I, I celebrate and I embrace that. I like the fact that new things are always on the horizon, that in some cases, tools that have been with us for a long time continue to evolve and grow because the needs change and their audience also, you know, demands improved and, and better ways of working with education technology. So I think you've got to keep tinkering. You've got to keep uh, your eyes on the horizon, but you also have to definitely put the needs of the learner first and at the heart of all of that. And I mentioned at the beginning, Jason, your passion for esports, and I'm curious about the place that esports holds in our schools. Tell us a little bit about your passion in this area and why you think it should be integrated into every school. Absolutely. I'm really very passionate about esports, and it comes from a personal background. So I'm I'm a father of two children who are neurodiverse, and they have never um, over time found their 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 way uh, to engage in your typical field sports, I guess you could say, that that dominate most schools. And, and what I have found is when I started just discussing what they're passionate about with in my own home, um, they can talk for days about games and, and, and how to, you know, show skills in games and the, and the skills that they develop and the uh, the way that they uh, kind of create a community around them of gamers who who kind of celebrate their skills, but also they love to play together. And and so what I've noticed over the last few years in Australia has been a, a real groundswell of support and capacity to create esports leagues within schools. And and this has done what I would hope it would do, and that has been to build student engagement. We've got now students that are kind of coming out of the shadows in, in our own school at Villanova, and, and they are now our, our, our heroes. We've got other students, traditional sports people, who are celebrating 
their achievement. I've got parents on the phone for the first time saying that my son has gone to your school for four or five years and this is the first time that he has engaged in anything that has been outside of the curriculum. And, and they are really, they're very gracious and grateful that we are doing that. But I think also for the student, it kind of builds their tribe around them. It gives them people that are like themselves and I, I think that um, it gives them a reason to come to school in some cases. And I love that circle back to that parent, student, teacher or school triangle and the importance and the power of supporting every learner in a school environment. I think that's critical and, and I love that that's what you're doing at Villanova College, but also in the bigger picture of you as a parent and your why behind doing this. It's really cool to hear, Jason. Let's jump into some quick fire questions. The first thing that comes to your head and maybe a brief why. What's your favorite EdTech book or resource? Okay, without a doubt, it's Twitter. Twitter keeps my finger on the pulse and I just love the EdTech support, the networking, how progressive it is. There's a lot to filter out, but I think it's a great place to be uh, following education technology. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. One of the recent tweets, and, and this is how we got connected on Twitter, and most of my connections are, uh, and I love it, uh, was all around Elon Musk and and people feeling like they need to get off the Twitter bandwagon and get off. I said, no, don't, don't leave. We've built this amazing community, incredible people. It's now more than ever that we need to come together and keep things going. So fantastic shout out. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. What's your go-to EdTech tool that the listeners need to try? Okay, without a doubt, I'm, I'm going to call out Adobe Aero. It's a, a great tool that runs on mobile devices and it's a way for you to kind of create augmented reality experiences. And it's kind of become something that I have become more and more passionate about over time. It's a way to really embrace uh, new technology in a way that is very engaging. Um, it's, it's a new way to kind of create different a different kind of reality in education. I'm, I'm all for it. So you must give Adobe Aero a try. Really cool. We'll make sure the links to everything you're sharing are in the podcast notes as well, Jason. What's one daily habit or practice that helps you enjoy, progress and succeed in your career? Um, for me, it's drawing and uh, playing music. So I think that drawing and playing music are uh, they're, they're creative outlets, but at the same time, they're, they're also, they, they keep you in the moment and they keep you grounded. Um, so I'm a deep thinker and sometimes I overthink a lot of things. And so I find for me drawing and playing music, you have to be in the moment and, and it's important to do that. Jason, you've shared so many pieces of wisdom and knowledge here with us today. And I know the listeners are going to want to follow and connect with you. What's the best way for them to do that? Uh, well, definitely. We've spoken about it before. I'm still all over Twitter. So I think that it has, for me, been a great way to build um, a network of people around me that I follow. Um, and that's that's helped my practice over a long time as an educator. So Twitter's a great way and also LinkedIn. I like the fact that in LinkedIn, we can create stories and, you know, there's more to say and there's more, there's deeper learning that, that happens in uh, LinkedIn. So those are two great ways to connect with me. Awesome, Jason. Like I said, the links are in the podcast notes as well. Thank you so much for your time today. Really inspirational. My pleasure. And thank you for having me. It's been great. This was the last episode of 2022. Thank you so much for your support. And I look forward to seeing you back in February 2023 for more podcasts and more amazing free learning. Stay safe and I'll see you again next year. If you enjoyed today's episode, please follow us and share the podcast with your PLN and colleagues. Please remember to spend a few minutes to rate this podcast too on your podcast channel of choice so we can reach even more educators and edtech enthusiasts globally. Remember, you have the chance to win as well. If you liked today's episode, please don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another episode and be in the drawing to win prizes every week. If you know others that would enjoy the show, please hit that share button and brighten their day. Join us again next week for your weekly EdTech hit with at Mr. Kemp NZ. We'll see you again soon.